guys, Booney here with Fishing Boat Magazine. Exciting times ahead. Why? I hear you ask. Because of this. Yes, check it out. Time for a project boat. Everyone loves a good project boat. It's about, oh, everyone's got one of these sitting in their backyard. And we're going to turn it into a fish catching weapon. That's what we're going to do. So get into those little tight to get places up in the top creeks and all that sort of stuff. If there's a track to get there, we're gonna we're gonna take it and put it in. So we'll have a look at this first. <coughs> have a little walk around. Um, plate for electric motor. If you're handy with a welder, you can do this yourself. I am not handy. My missus wanted missus wanted a, a handyman. She got a fisherman. So sorry, darling. Have a look at these welds. So this was done by Rife and Marine in Rockhampton. That is sexy as they come. So that's on there ready to go. This thing didn't didn't even have a safety chain on it. I even had to put a safety chain on it for me. Look at those welds again. Good on your Rife and I highly recommend those guys. They do bloody good work. So Early days, and it's a little bit of non-slip tape on the um, on the floor. Plenty of other little ideas for it, you know, like little rod racks and all that sort of stuff. Have a look in here. What a mess! It's half the fun, you know, cleaning it all up, getting it all ready to go. Oh. Didn't even have a transducer bracket on the back of it. The boys put that on there, so she's all ready to go. Get the missus out here to pull some of these weeds out though. Don't tell her I said that. Anyway, back to the boat. 1940s to hat to, two stroke. This thing is about as reliable as they come. Probably, you know, second or third pull this thing goes, so it's always been reliable and um, never had an issue with it. So, man, this is so cool. I can't wait to get in start casting out of this thing but yeah so we're going to put going to put a sounder in there um you're going to put a sounder in there uh, so we've got a um 10 year old birthday party getting put together at the moment which is why i'm outside braxton's <laughs> he's now having a, he's having a shit fit but it's definitely a lot better being out here anyway creek tinny creek basher yep beautiful I can't remember where we were. Anyway, this is it. Yeah, anyway, so yeah, we're gonna put a, a sounder in it, electric motor, and we're gonna turn a $500 tinny into a fish catching weapon. Um, yeah, stay tuned and back soon. Hey guys, Bernie here with Fish and Boat Magazine and we're doing part two of the how to take your $500 tinny and turn it into a fish catching weapon. So the uh, the first video got some uh, some really good responses so hopefully there's been plenty of people that have been you know rekindling the relationship with that little old tinny that's been sitting down the back of the yard for for years and years and got it back out and um, cleaned her up and taken it out to catch some fish in it again so yeah, so let's have a little walkthrough of, of part two and uh, let's get into it. A little cruisy. Yeah, I'm being out of getting some love. Oh, actually, so I don't know if you know, if you watch, if you watch the first video, he's got me in trouble. Someone blabbed to the missus and she lost her shit. Let's have a quick recap. She's all ready to go. I'm get the missus out here to pull some of these weeds out though. Don't tell her I said that. So yeah, so she's thrown a shit fit and can't believe you put that on YouTube, blah, 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 blah. Anyway, so look at us now though. Look at that, concrete is king. 
No more weeds. No more weeds, boys. Bloody awesome. So we've got uh, JNC Howard Concreting to thank for this. Uh, yeah, Jace. JNC Howard Concreting. Yep. So thanks very much, Jace. Bloody um, looks amazing. Yeah, if you need any any concrete and done, just make sure you uh, make sure you look, give Jace a yell. So anyway, on to more important things, Tinny. All right, so not too much has changed since last time. A few little differences. Uh, first of all, the electric motor. So Minn Kota Trova, it's just a 12 volt, 55 pound motor, which is all you need for, for these little tinnies. Um, on the bottom there is actual, the actual Minn Kota uh, quick release bracket. So a little difference is, so you can see where you put your lock through, it's actually sideways. Uh, some of the other ones have actually got the hole on the top and sometimes it can be hard to get your little lock in there if you want, so you'll get a lock in there, no worries. So that's why I went that way. So yeah, the electric motor is gonna keep us in position. Uh, once we find those fish, keep us in position, we can move around, sort of a little bit of stealth mode, all that sort of thing, and they are definitely well worth the money. All right, next thing we can talk about here is uh, we've got battery boxes, just to make it look a little bit neater. Uh, one under the under the passenger, so the feet will, whoever sits there, the feet will just go over the top of that. And the other battery box there is for the sounder. So these these aren't set to charge or anything like that. So you bring it home as long as you've got uh, a battery charger or two, depending if you're going to go the next day. Uh, so you just pull up, put the battery charger on there, make sure they're fully charged for for the next trip. So up the front, we're still. Yeah, the anchors and stuff are there, so we need to build ourselves like a little false floor in here. Uh, it'll stop that those uh, that bit of gear and stuff rubbing on the hull as well, and plus it'll make it look a little bit neater too. So that's still on the um, on the to-do list. So bucket seats, one for the passenger, one for the driver. Nice and comfy, and um, then you're out fishing, you need um, you need to be comfortable. So yeah, we rip the old seats out, put a couple of new bucket seats in, and Used them already, brilliant. So, all right, let's keep going. The 1940s Tahatsu still um, still going well. A couple of pulls, and she's um she's a ripper. So, uh, yeah, the transducer has been put on the back. So this is just the um, for the Hummerbird Helix, which is that fellow there. So that's a 12 inch. Uh, and depending on your budget, you can go for a 10, you can go for a nine, uh, but I would definitely stick with hummingbird so so hummingbird's got the best um, imaging um, in the creeks and estuaries by a long way so if you need to save your pennies for a little bit longer just to get one I highly recommend it and back in the day um, when I very first got my hummingbird especially with the mega imaging in the gen 2 gen 3 gen 4s in the helixes um, my results and and fishing started to started to greatly increase as well so yeah no bullshit we're going to in part three we're actually going to have a look at it uh, i'm going to take it out and show you exactly what you need to do what we're what we're looking at on the screen and what you need to do to find those rich fish rich areas and um and, and make the most of it so but that'll be part three so stay tuned for that one so yeah awesome and um yeah, so this is basically just going back to back to basics, you know, going back to the um, the old school days. So this is the original tinny that I had when I very first got my license about 20 years ago. So, you know, a couple of little improvements there. And um, yeah, we'll show you uh, that you don't need a big flash tinny or a big flash boat to catch good fish. So we're going to have a look at a few little results now. And yeah, stay tuned for, for number three when we we get down and dirty with some uh, some settings and, and some techniques. Great basher. She's got, got the goods. Oh man, 51 centimetre jack. Oh, awesome. Going get another one. Good Jack. Good Jack. Oh. In the box, in the boat. Oh.
It is definitely possible to get good sized fish from a little tinny. That bar is 93. Awesome, we'll put it back. Tag in, ready for release. There goes a little mullet. Go. Hey, Braxy boy. That's the biggest one I caught. That's the juicy, the biggest one I caught. There you go. Good. Good. Hooked up. Oh, are we keeping him? No, nah, we got to let him go, buddy. Yeah. But can we measure him? Yeah. Could he's bigger than my 80 centimeter. Could be. Oh. Oh, Dad. Oh, really there we go. Whoa. There you go, big man. Good. Whoa. Oh, yeah. What would he be? You bugging? Yeah. That's a bit of getting in. <laughs> uh, nah, hummingbird. Put us on the fish. Whoa. Good on you, mate. Well done. <laughs> Thumbs up? Thumbs up. Yeah, buddy. Look at this, but we just got an 88 from here. You can see down here, this little drop off couple of. Oh, yeah. Ta G'day, guys. Bernie here with Fish and Boat Magazine. Uh, we're doing part three of our How to Turn Your Tinny $500 Tinny into a fish catching weapon so <clears throat> we've already had great success catching uh, some good sized bar and that sort of thing but what we're going to do now is we're going to show you guys just how we go about doing it so we are in the tinny as you can see yeah have a bird helix there and we're going to do a uh, do a scan along them. we're just scanning some uh, shallow bank here at the moment so it's pretty shallow, it's pretty warm, it's about a thousand degrees, but <clears throat> yeah, we'll just go and um, we'll go and show you uh, what we can see on our sounder and what you should be looking for. Very shallow water, a meter or so deep. You can see a bit of a uh, drain there, and there's a fish sitting in there, and there's another fish sitting up up on top of it just here. All right, so we got a drain coming in from the left, just there. And we've got probably three, a little group of three or four fish there as well. King and Barra probably. A couple more fish coming through there. It's a very, uh, very fish rich area. And uh, basically I only found it by just um, 
doing what we're doing now. It was just poking along the bank, having a look. Have a look at that. It's a good size barra there, another one there, and another group of probably smaller king. Just there we can see. shallow water but you can see those fish definitely rolling through yeah, a couple more king there and there there's one right beside the beam right beside the boat I should say come up real well there but there's a couple just sitting there and another one there there's fish everywhere pretty much all right a good size fish there and there's scattered fish everywhere good size barra there didn't come up real well not come up real clear there but Fish there. There's a real good barrel right beside the boat we just drove over. So we'll just look at some um, uh, settings quickly. So this particular area that we just scanned, go to, so this is upper, oh, area down the bottom. All right, so this is for your upper, so which is your side imaging, contrast sitting at uh, eight, sensitivity sitting at 18, so quite high. So, and scroll speed I think is on around six, seven or eight, I normally run up between seven and ten. So if you go into the next area and you know like the because the mud's the, the bottom's very muddy here. So if you go into the next area and it's really rocky, you're gonna have to be playing with those settings to get the best out of it. So because obviously it's um it's gonna reflect really badly with that hard bottom. So you're gonna have to back your sensitivity off. So you're gonna have to change your settings. So um Depending on where you are and what your bottom composition is, you are going to have to change your settings a little bit. If you were to leave the settings as they are out of the box, you would still see you would still see fish. You would still see good fish, um, but to get the most out of it, just need just those uh, just those little fine adjustments. So, all right, I just uh, hit the cursor on the helix. So. On your uh, keypad there hit that which brings up your little cursor here so what we're looking at here right where that cursor is is a fallen tree or a fallen bit of timber and around that timber you can see not really real clear but it's fish there another one there definitely one there another one beside it and another one there so that bit of timber is holding quite a few fish so if I was doing this properly, I would be definitely having a cast at that. And there's a couple of ways that you can do this. So one is when you go past and it comes up, just comes up on your screen, which means that that is going to be directly under your transducer. You guys just have a quick look on the bank. You might find a bit of a, a tree or something or a, a snag or something on the bank and directly out into the water is where that's where that tree is that you want to cast that so the creeks only sort of 15 meters wide then if the creeks only 15 meters wide then you can position your boat pretty easily and cast at that bit of timber the issue you'll run into is if it's sort of out of the way a little bit or it's out in the open you've got no landmarks to go off so this is one little handy tip that i do 
So this one here, so we've got our cursor right on the screen. So we'll hit mark. So waypoint 718 created. Then I'll go on into my GPS and I'll put that cursor on the mark and I'll go and I'll sneak back up to it. I might sit, you know, sort of 15 or 20 meters away from it, about a car, good cast length. And then I'll actually cast at that off the GPS screen. Hopefully that's making sense. So um, yeah, it's about the, the easiest way that I've found to be able to do it. Sometimes I might fan those casts maybe um, you know, sort of 15 degrees off the front of the boat, maybe, or or I'll go out to the side of it and sit beside it and watch that, watch that bit of timber on the side imaging right beside it and cast from the side. So you definitely know that your casts are on the money. Um, if you were, you know, a family coming out here, you'd be able to mark that and you know, grab your live mullets, grab your live baits, and sit probably maybe 15 meters in front of it cast the live baits out the back right on that spot and then sit there and wait and just see what happens sometimes they might bite um sometimes they might not you move on to the next spot so it's just about a little bit of trial and error a uh, bit of patience and persistence is is the key you know what i mean like you can't go out that just one time and do this and it doesn't work then so be it because you know controlling those fish is is the environment so something might be off it might be Oh, wind, barometer, uh, who knows, because Barra Mundi are an absolute arseholes at times. So, yeah, you've just got to just keep keep at it, you know, keep trying, trying different ideas, different techniques, and uh, good things will happen. Oh, this is the part of the creek. Let's see if we can uh, have a look at this, but we just got an 88 from here. You can see down here, this little drop-off, couple of nice bass sitting there. That one didn't come up real well. But he's a good fish, another barra. Good Baz. In the little tinu. Where are you going? on the map. Nice little 88. 88. And the whole prawn, four inch. Beautiful. Nothing really much on the side imaging. I've still got the motor down so that left hand side is not reading uh, very well. You can see those barras sitting on that drop off there. It's exactly what we're looking for when we go out. Oh, there's another barra coming through there. You can sort of see him on the side imaging there a little bit as well, which means he's off to the right hand side a little bit. Oh, there's another one on the left there. There's a few more. Oh, there's another good one up on top of there. And um, settings aren't too much far from, um, well probably a little bit, from how they come out of the box. So that's on, that's uh, side imaging up the top. Go down to enhance, this is a Gen 2 as well. So we've got 15 sensitivity, nine contrast for the uh, side imaging up the top. Go exit menu, go to lower. And I normally run it fairly high, so the contrast backed off a little bit, and the sensitivity high. I really just try and bring those, um, bring the fish out. 
uh, nice and clear. Uh, I don't mind if it sort of blows the bottom out a little bit. Yeah, as long as you can see those, see those fish nice and clear. So yeah, anyway, we'll have a few more casts and see if we can get another one. Good bass. Ta-ta. So we're just up a little narrow side creek here at the moment and you can see a little congregation of fish just here. So if we look behind us, we'll be able to pick one of those snags to, and just out from there is where we're going to be casting. So we'll be able to spot lock us ourselves, you know, around about here and cast back and know that we're going to be casting at fish. Going. There's still fish coming through there. So yeah, so it's just 12 meters either side we're scanning at the moment there. Oh, there's a big a bar that comes so there's oh, there's a good little congregation over there. So that bar is up off the bottom. You can see him there and the shadow there, which means he's up off the bottom. But if you have a look at this. Look at that one, two, three, four, five, six. So that little bit of timber back there is holding some good fish. So we go set ourselves up. We could set ourselves up to um, to spot lock and, and cast at that. And um, I'd be pretty confident with how tight they're grouped that we'd uh, we'd probably get a buy out of them. So, but this is for educational purposes today. So I'll. Ref Try my best not to um, to grab a rod out. So I've done some fishing earlier and, and caught a few fish. So sort of it's going to get me through the hard times. So just scanning a little bit of mud bank here at the moment. Let's see what we can see. Same settings that we were running before. See a few fish, a couple of smaller fish there. A little bit of timber or something else on the left hand side there. Not a real good shot, but I think I reckon there's a couple of fish sitting on that. But I have to go back and have another a better look. All right, she's a bit shallow there, but you can definitely see a group of fish there, and these are actually bigger barra out to this side. here and a couple of fish I'd probably say they might be king. Try not to steer the boat and do this at the same time. Oh, just hit a bit of mud but there's another little group there. So this particular area that we're sitting here in the moment is gold. Like there's fish everywhere. Get the rods out. You know, spot lock, start casting. Yeah, need to get, need to get into it. I think I'm gonna have a cast here so